or welcome if this is your first one you're watching. Um, remember how I said literally in the last vlog that I feel like things are just constantly happening like one right after the other? We had an incident night before last. Um, I'm filming this on Monday. So yesterday was Easter the night before. At about 2.30 in the morning, we had an incident. In our area, you deal with a lot of wildlife. There's deer, foxes, raccoons, turkeys, mountain lions, and there's just a lot of wildlife. So one of the things with keeping chickens is making sure things are predator proof. Really, we watch for it for all of our animals. Um, even Max and Sirius, we watch for it. Specifically the chickens because they are outside overnight. Now what happened night before last? And unfortunately that was what we suspect is probably another mountain lion taking our hen Lucy. We heard the noise. I went to see what I could see and the little side door in the coop had gotten opened. There wasn't any damage to the coop itself, so I'm not actually sure how a mountain lion would have opened that without like just ripping it off his hinges or at least leaving marks on it to some degree. I It just baffles me that they were able to do that. I don't know if somehow it had gotten pushed open and was already open and so they didn't have to open the door. I don't know. I don't know, but they got her. Um, when I went out, nothing was out there anymore. It had already left, but the door was open. There was feathers, a trail of feathers, and she was gone, and Ricky was in the nesting box, well, in the nesting area, where they go up into at night, um, in the roosting area. Totally freaked out. And after seeing him in the light, because it was still really dark when I went out there, he is missing tail feathers, like maybe he got grabbed, but he was able to get away, but he's okay. He's missing tail feathers, but he's okay. He wasn't bleeding, he wasn't hurt in any other way, he was just missing feathers. And he was very shaken up and freaked out. And so we secured the coop to the best we could. And because it had been really awful weather and we had been so busy the couple days before that, I had eggs that I had not yet washed off and put in the fridge, so I'm putting them in the incubator. So this will have our last four eggs from Lucy in it to hopefully hatch chicks. I was not prepared to hatch chicks right now, but since she's now gone, this is my final opportunity to hatch chicks from her and Ricky and I wanted to at least do one more batch from them. So we'll see how this goes. I I mean, I'm pretty confident if there was going to be a chance, there's a decent one. So I feel pretty good. I'm excited for chicks again. Chicks is always really fun. It's a lot of work. <laughs> it can feel like a long process till they're outside, especially till they start laying. But it's it's exciting. We love having chicks. They're so much fun. Max adores them always. Every batch of chicks we've, ha we've had, he gives baths to and wants to go check on them and it's really adorable. I'll link all of our past chicken videos for you guys. We have the incubator set up here. This is the one we've used every time. We've borrowed it from a friend and we've used it every time we've hatched eggs. This'll be our third time hatching eggs. I'm just letting this kind of settle and stabilize. You wanna let it run for a little bit first. So I already have the water in it and it's getting up to temperature and working on stabilizing. So after it's run for a while, I'll start those. Um, and it's 21 days of incubation till hatch day.
Oh, yep. Can you see it? A little bit. See how this whole side is dark? It's got it pretty good. Yeah. Yay! So that's one. That doesn't mean all of them will hatch, but this one's good. Yay! Okay, just one more. And yay! So all four of them are developed. one hole in that egg and then another hole in this egg see how quickly they start making their way out this one is chirping like crazy now One last update for this video. There will continue to be updates. Um, it has been probably four days now. And they are doing so good. Can you guys hear? It's a little, it's a little more space in this setup, which I think is really good. Um, we have this, in the corner. This is actually Max's dog crate, but it was the best I could figure out from everything I researched and looked into. And we just lined it with cardboard. So while they're still this small, they can't walk out. And it gives them plenty of space to grow. So the black one actually has a story of it's hatching. We put that back and watch out Max. Come on this side. We put this back. This is how we're keeping the cat away. It's by this gate, which so far has worked. I'm hoping it works long enough for the time that I need it to. So in the group, we have four chicks total. Four, I put four eggs in the incubator, all four hatched. It's amazing. I am so, so happy. Three are the kind of gray teal color that our hen Lucy was. And then there's the one that's more of a black and white that looks like Ricky a rooster when he was a chick because we got both of them in the same group as chicks 
and that one looks a lot like that one. So it's really fun. I'm hoping and praying all four are hens. I don't need any more roosters. I hope all four are hens, but we'll see. With my luck, it's kind of a 50-50 shot, so we'll see. <laughs> um, but the first three hatched perfectly. Um, they So the first one hatched maybe 8.15, 8.30 in the morning. And the others were pipped but hadn't made any progress. When I came home for lunch from work, because I had to work that day, there was another one. Then when I came home after work, so by about 5 or 6, it was three and so I, I started putting the pine shavings in their crate started trying to finish getting that set up for them so that I could move them after the fourth one was hatched and they were kind of dried off enough to move because you want them to dry off first before you remove them from the incubator in the best case scenario and the fourth one was pipped it was chirping, it was moving, it was making noise. There weren't any signs of issues yet. It seemed fine, it seemed like it just hadn't yet. But it was definitely working on it. Two of the three chicks that had already hatched were not drying off very well. I think because of how crowded they were in there, um, it really didn't allow for as much ability to dry off, I think, I don't know. That's all I can think of is they were so crowded, they didn't get to dry off as well. So they weren't, soaking soaking wet still but they also they definitely were not all the way dried off they were like playing soccer and laying all over and rolling all over the egg that had not hatched yet they were a rambunctious three in there they kept laying on top of it they kept walking over it they, which is totally normal and fine and i know some of the other eggs had had that like they had had that happen too um, but you had three doing it to one, so I feel like it was a little more, I don't know, just my theory. But that was going on, and it was like 12 hours since it had pipped, which means since they poked the first initial hole, and the fourth one still had not hatched after 12 hours. And that's concerning. That's the time period where you're going, mm, what's going on? And it was kind of not even really starting to. It just didn't seem to be doing anything. So we took the three out and put them under the heat lamp. We figured they would dry off better that way anyways, so they weren't crowded. So that worked, and they, they did. They instantly started drying off better once they were out of the incubator with more space under the heat lamp. And they were good, they were happy, they were doing great. We gave the other chick, the other egg, about, I want to say maybe 40 to 60 minutes to see if it would start doing anything. At least, it was at least that amount of time. Still was doing nothing. I could still see it moving. I could see its beak. I think I heard it chirp once after that, but it, it, it wasn't doing anything to try to peck the egg the rest of the way open. And I was getting worried that it was going to start just getting exhausted and not stop trying and would never make it out. We helped it, which is last case, last ditch resort, like worst case scenario thing. You don't want to have to do that for several reasons. It is very risky and should not be what you jump to. Um, and that's why I was trying to just keep giving it more time and try things that might help it before trying to. And then I just thought, it's been so long. It seems so exhausted. It's not going to be able to. And actually, we had that happen with another egg that had um, had the same thing that is our hen. Um, she had the same thing. She just got so exhausted she couldn't finish. She couldn't keep going and didn't end up being able to get out on her own. And Andrew's mom actually helped me help her get out. It is risky though. You do have to know what you're doing. You do have to be careful because you can make them bleed and hemorrhage, which is the biggest concern. Also, 
there's risk that if if they haven't yet it's too soon so you have to be careful and make sure you know the timeline make sure you're paying attention to timing make sure you watch for the proper warning signs do not just do this without researching um, I'm giving all of those disclaimers because I don't want this to be like sending the message this is a this is a common thing to do or even this is how you should do it or anything like that this is just what happened with us so putting that out there we did we did end up having to help her and so we we pulled her out, grabbed a paper towel and a wet paper towel, and I started peeling the top of the egg where I could see her head, where she had pipped a hole because that's the air part. That's the part that you you can open without risking ripping their skin or them bleeding or anything like that. So I did that part first to kind of see how she was positioned. And then it just became this game of, getting more and more slowly and watching, and then starting to fully pull her out of the sack. Thankfully, she bled a little bit, but not much at all. It wasn't ripping her skin. Um, I think it was she bled a little from where she was connected to the egg. I put pressure, it stopped, she was okay. She was exhausted, but she was okay. And then I put her in the incubator and left her in there overnight so she could sleep without the other rambunctious three and dry off really, really well before moving her. And then we moved her and they've done amazing since. So I'm so glad we didn't wait and she's okay because I don't know if she would have been able to get out on her own. So I feel good about what happened in this scenario. I feel like it was good that we got her out and made sure she was okay. Whew, a crazy moment. It went well, it ended very well. They're all four amazing. They're doing so well. They're drinking, they're eating great, they're having fun. I'm just really happy. So this is probably the best outcome I could have hoped for. All four chicks hatched beautifully. They're amazing. Um, it's great. So it ended very, very well. And we have four beautiful chicks out of the four eggs, which is the first time we've ever incubated eggs that all four or the whole amount of eggs we put in actually hatched. Um, usually we have all but one hatch. This time we had all that we put in hatch. So that was really exciting too. That was very exciting. So that is the story for this time. And we have four more chicks and this is the last batch of chicks we will have from Lucy and Ricky. It's very sad, but it's really amazing to be able to have one last round of chicks from her. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, thoughts, anything you'd like to share, leave it in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed for more fun and we'll see you guys next time.